Bonjour YouTube, welcome back to our channel. Today we are taking you to Musée Bourdel. So, on you are. Musée Bourdel is based near Montparnasse in the artist's former atelier. Emile Antoine Bourdel was born in Montauban on October 30th, 1861. He showed particular talent in drawing at school and at the age of 13, he entered his father's shop as an apprentice. In the evening, he took classes at the Montauban Drawing School, where he learned the technique of modeling from copies of antique plasters. In 1876, he obtained a scholarship and the entrance examination to the École de Beaux-Arts in Toulouse. The eight years of study in Toulouse were those of solitude and work tempered by the discipline of academic teaching. Bourdel received a second entrance examination for the École de Beaux-Arts in Paris in 1884, and as a result, entered the studio of Alexandre Falguier, whom he left two years later. Of that experience, he later said, I had enough. I don't understand anything about all these systems of prizes, competitions. He moved permanently to the studio, today's museum, in 1885. The same year his plaster, the first victory of Hannibal, was crowned at the Salon des Artistes Français. Bourdel made a name of himself, but had to earn a living. In 1893, Rodin hired him as a practitioner. The two men appreciated and valued each other. Just two years later, his hometown commissioned him for the Monument to the Dead to the combatants and defenders of Tarn et Garonne from 1870 to 1871. In 1900, Bourdel carried out the decoration of the theatre of the Grévin Museum at the request of the director, Gabriel Thomas. The same year, he founded with Rodin and the sculptor Desbois a school in Montparnasse for the free teaching of the sculpture. In 1905, the founder Ebra opened his Parisian gallery to Bourdel on Rue Royale. This was his first personal exhibition that featured 39 sculptures, 18 paintings and 21 drawings. He left Rodin's studio in 1908. In 1909, Bourdel began to teach at the Académie de la Grande Chaumière, exhibited in 1910 at the Salon de la Société Nationale de Beaux-Arts, Iraqi Archer delighted the public and critics alike. Gabriel Thomas called Bourdel on the construction site of Théâtre des Champs Élysées in 1910 to 1913. The following decade, 1919 to 1929, brought major official commissions for Bourdel. Bourdel died on October 1st. So now we are sitting in the terrace. You see this really cool thing about this museum is that you you first go around the rooms, there are different ateliers um, where he was actually working with his students as well. Uh, so some of the ateliers, they feature the sculpture, the others are featuring the technique of how, uh, you know, the technique of making sculptures. So whether you're using marble or bronze or wood, and um, once you're done with the exhibition and the garden and all of that, you can come here, it's a nice terrace, there is a little restaurant, not very really restaurant, it's like a cafe. So I'm just choosing from the menu. We decided we would just sit down. It takes some time for me to choose, but hopefully I will find something. They don't have anything, hot chocolate or anything like that. They also have some tea. I like tea, but I'm not sure if I can go with it. Uh, we ordered our coffee, we're waiting here, and today we have a special feature from the terrace we can actually see the garbage in the city. We'll show you more in a bit. <laughs> what we love about this museum is the intimacy it offers of Bourdel's apartment where he lived and worked. The grandeur of the grand hall of plasterwork in its light, the journey of his life and work, and the gardens that seem to present the elements of Bourdel's life in unison. 
So thank you so much for joining us today. If you like this content, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And until next week, au revoir.